Story 1. The Clown in the Cornfield In the quiet town of Green Hollow, there was a legend about an abandoned farm at the outskirts. It was said that in the 1950s, a traveling circus had stopped there for a show. Among the performers was a clown named Rollo, whose laughter masked a sinister secret. Rollo was known for his twisted sense of humor and a malevolent streak that often left people feeling uneasy. One summer night, a group of local children went missing after visiting the circus. The townsfolk searched everywhere but found no trace of them. As suspicion grew, Rollo vanished without a trace, leaving only his red nose and oversized shoes behind. Decades later, teenagers from the local high school, eager to prove their bravery, decided to spend a night in the old farmhouse. The place was rumored to be haunted, with reports of eerie laughter and the distant sound of carnival music. As the group settled in, they discovered an old photograph of Rollo and the missing children, their faces contorted in terror. As midnight approached, strange things began to happen. The sound of children laughing echoed through the halls, and the air grew thick with an unexplainable chill. One by one, the teenagers started disappearing, their screams piercing the night. Those who remained stumbled upon a hidden room in the basement filled with old circus props and blood-stained costumes. In the center of the room stood Rollo, his once colorful costume now tattered and stained with age. His painted smile was twisted into a grotesque grin, and his eyes gleamed with a malevolent light. He greeted them with a voice that sent shivers down their spines. Welcome to the greatest show on earth. The teens tried to escape, but the doors and windows were sealed shut. Rollo's laughter filled the house, and he pursued them with an inhuman speed. In a final desperate attempt to survive, one of the teens set the farmhouse ablaze. As the flames consumed the building, they saw Rollo's figure standing in the midst of the inferno, his laughter echoing into the night. The survivors never spoke of that night again, but the legend of Rollo the Clown continued to haunt Green Hollow. To this day, locals claim to hear distant carnival music and laughter whenever they pass by the old farm, a chilling reminder of the horrors that once lurked there. Story 2. The Clown in the Woods In the small town of Millville, nestled deep in the woods, there was a tale of a cursed clown named Binky. Binky was a performer in a traveling circus that met a tragic end when it was caught in a forest fire. The circus was entirely consumed by the flames, but Binky's spirit was said to linger, haunting the woods where the tragedy occurred. Years later, a family moved to a house near the forest. The Woods family had two children, Timmy and Sarah, who loved to explore the outdoors. Despite warnings from locals, they often ventured into the woods, captivated by its mystery and beauty. One autumn afternoon, while exploring deeper into the forest, the siblings stumbled upon an old circus wagon, charred and decaying. Inside, they found remnants of costumes, props, and a diary belonging to Binky. As they read the diary, they discovered Binky's tragic story and how his love for performing turned into a dark obsession after the fire. That night, Timmy and Sarah began hearing strange noises outside their window. The sounds of a distant calliope and a faint, eerie laughter filled the air. Their parents dismissed their fears as imagination, but the children knew something was wrong. The next day, Timmy went missing while playing near the edge of the forest. Sarah, desperate to find her brother, followed the trail into the woods. As she ventured deeper, the trees seemed to close in around her, and the path became overgrown and unrecognizable. She eventually found herself back at the charred circus wagon, where Binky's ghost awaited. Binky's once friendly face was now a ghastly mask of anger and sorrow. He spoke of the betrayal he felt from the townspeople, and how his spirit could not rest until he exacted revenge. He revealed Timmy, trapped in a ghostly cage, his eyes wide with fear. Sarah begged Binky to release her brother, offering to help him find peace. Binky, touched by her sincerity, agreed on one condition. She had to perform his final act. With trembling hands, Sarah donned an old clown costume and mimicked Binky's last performance. As she danced and juggled, the forest grew silent, and Binky's spirit began to fade. Timmy was freed, and the siblings ran back home, never to speak of the encounter again. The forest, once dark and foreboding, seemed to lift its curse. But every now and then, on a quiet night, the sound of a calliope and faint laughter can still be heard, a reminder of the clown who once haunted the woods. Story 3. The Clown in the Mirror In the bustling city of Riverton, there was an urban legend about a cursed mirror that could summon a demonic clown. The mirror, known as the Laughing Glass, 
was said to have been part of a magician's act in the early 1900s. The magician, known as the Great Lorenzo, had a clown assistant named Chuckles, who was rumored to dabble in dark magic. One fateful night, during a particularly dangerous trick, Chuckles performed a ritual in front of the mirror, hoping to gain immortality. Instead, he was trapped inside the mirror, his soul bound to it for eternity. The mirror disappeared after the magician's death, but the legend lived on. Decades later, a young woman named Emily moved into an old apartment in Riverton. She found an antique mirror in the attic, its frame adorned with intricate carvings and a peculiar inscription. Unaware of its dark history, she hung it in her bedroom. One night, Emily noticed strange occurrences in her apartment. Objects moved on their own, and she heard whispers coming from the mirror. Dismissing it as stress, she tried to ignore the eerie happenings. But the situation worsened when she saw a clown's reflection in the mirror, even though she was alone in the room. The clown, with a sinister grin and hollow eyes, seemed to be watching her. Terrified, Emily sought help from a local historian who told her about the legend of the laughing glass and Chuckles the Clown. Desperate to rid herself of the cursed mirror, she attempted to destroy it, but the glass was unbreakable. The clown's presence grew stronger, and Emily's nights were filled with nightmares and hallucinations. She learned that the only way to free herself from the curse was to perform a ritual to banish Chuckles' spirit. Gathering the necessary items, she prepared for the ritual, her heart pounding with fear. As she chanted the incantation, the mirror's surface began to ripple, and Chuckles emerged, his laughter echoing through the room. Emily continued the ritual, despite the clown's attempts to stop her. Finally, with a burst of energy, the mirror shattered, and Chuckles' spirit was banished. Emily's apartment returned to normal, but she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. She moved out soon after, leaving the remnants of the mirror behind. The Laughing Glass's shards were eventually lost, but the legend remained. Some say that if you find a piece of the mirror and look into it at midnight, you might still see Chuckles' sinister grin staring back at you. Story 4. The Carnival of Shadows In the heart of rural America, nestled between rolling hills and dense forests, lay the sleepy town of Millfield. The town was a quiet, tight-knit community where everyone knew each other, and life moved at a slow, predictable pace. That all changed one fateful summer when a traveling carnival arrived on the outskirts of town. The carnival seemed to appear overnight, a sprawling, vibrant wonderland of tents, rides, and games that promised excitement and adventure. The townsfolk were abuzz with anticipation, eager to experience the thrills and delights the carnival had to offer. Among the attractions was a clown named Gideon, whose reputation as a master of laughter and mirth preceded him. Gideon's act was the highlight of the carnival, drawing crowds with his elaborate costumes, slapstick routines, and mesmerizing juggling skills. His painted smile and oversized shoes brought joy to children and adults alike, but behind the facade of happiness lurked a sinister secret. Gideon was not just a performer, he was the ringmaster of a dark and malevolent force that fed on fear and despair. As the days turned into weeks, strange occurrences began to plague Millfield. Children started to disappear, vanishing without a trace from their homes and playgrounds. The townsfolk, initially dismissive of the disappearances as accidents or pranks, grew increasingly anxious and suspicious. Whispers of the carnival's involvement spread like wildfire, and the once thriving attraction began to lose its luster. Among those who vanished was young Emily, the daughter of the local sheriff. Sheriff Tom Harding was a no-nonsense lawman with a deep love for his town and an unwavering determination to find his daughter. His investigation led him to the carnival, where he encountered Gideon. The clown's cheerful demeanor and alibi seemed airtight, but Tom couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. Desperate for answers, Tom enlisted the help of his old friend, Dr. Evelyn Harper, a renowned psychologist with a fascination for the paranormal. Together, they delved into the history of the carnival and uncovered a chilling pattern. Every town the carnival visited experienced a spate of disappearances, all linked to Gideon. As Tom and Evelyn dug deeper, they discovered that Gideon was not an ordinary clown. He was the last surviving member of an ancient order of dark magicians who had mastered the art of manipulating fear. Gideon's ancestors had performed rituals to summon a powerful demon, binding it to their bloodline. 
In exchange for eternal life and power, they were cursed to feed the demon with the souls of the innocent. Gideon had perfected his craft, using the carnival as a cover to lure children and siphon their life force. The laughter and joy he generated during his performances masked the sinister energy he harvested from his victims. With each soul he consumed, Gideon's power grew, and the demon's grip on him tightened. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Tom and Evelyn devised a plan to confront Gideon and break the curse. They gathered a group of townsfolk and stormed the carnival, determined to save the missing children and put an end to Gideon's reign of terror. Armed with holy water, blessed relics, and sheer determination, they confronted Gideon in the heart of the carnival. The final confrontation took place in the Big Top, where Gideon awaited them with a twisted smile. The air crackled with dark energy as the two sides clashed. Gideon used his supernatural abilities to conjure illusions and manipulate the minds of his attackers, turning their deepest fears against them. Tom and Evelyn fought valiantly, but they were no match for Gideon's power. Just as all seemed lost, Evelyn remembered an ancient incantation she had discovered during her research. She began to chant the words, calling upon the forces of light to banish the demon and break the curse. Gideon, realizing the threat, tried to silence her, but Tom intervened, sacrificing himself to buy Evelyn enough time to complete the ritual. With a final, desperate effort, Evelyn finished the incantation, and a blinding light engulfed the tent. The demon's hold on Gideon was shattered, and his body crumbled to dust. The children who had been taken returned to their families, dazed but unharmed. The carnival, now devoid of its dark influence, disappeared as mysteriously as it had arrived. Millfield slowly returned to normal, but the scars of that summer remained etched in the memories of those who had lived through it. Evelyn mourned the loss of her friend Tom, but she took solace in the knowledge that his sacrifice had saved countless lives. She dedicated herself to studying the paranormal, vowing to protect the world from the hidden horrors that lurked in the shadows. The legend of Gideon the Clown and the Cursed Carnival became a cautionary tale in Millfield, a reminder of the darkness that could hide behind a painted smile. And on quiet nights, when the wind whispered through the trees, the townsfolk could still hear the faint echo of carnival music, a haunting reminder of the horrors they had faced and the bravery that had saved them. Story 5. The Clown in the Mansion in the heart of New England, surrounded by dense woods and shrouded in mist, stood the old Blackwood Manor. The mansion had been abandoned for decades, its once grand halls now echoing with the whispers of the past. Local legends spoke of strange occurrences and ghostly apparitions, but the most chilling tale was that of the clown in the mansion. The story began in the late 1800s when the Blackwood family, one of the wealthiest families in the region, hosted extravagant parties and gatherings. Among their many entertainments was a clown named Percival, who was known for his uncanny ability to make even the sternest of guests laugh. Percival's performances were the highlight of every event, but behind his jovial exterior, he harbored a dark obsession. Percival was deeply in love with Beatrice Blackwood, the eldest daughter of the family. However, Beatrice's heart belonged to another, and Percival's unrequited love slowly twisted into madness. In his desperation, Percival turned to dark magic, making a pact with a demonic entity to win Beatrice's love. The ritual went horribly wrong. Instead of granting Percival's wish, the demon cursed him, binding his soul to the mansion and transforming him into a malevolent spirit. Percival's once cheerful visage became a grotesque mask of sorrow and rage, and his laughter turned into a haunting, bone-chilling sound that echoed through the empty halls of Blackwood Manor. The Blackwood family, unaware of the true nature of Percival's curse, continued to host their lavish parties. However, guests began to disappear under mysterious circumstances, and the mansion's reputation grew darker with each passing year. Eventually, the family abandoned the manor, leaving it to decay and become a local legend. Decades later, a team of paranormal investigators decided to explore Blackwood Manor, intrigued by the tales of the haunted clown. Led by Dr. William Harker, a renowned parapsychologist, the team included his assistant, Clara, a tech specialist named Jake, and a historian named Emily. They were determined to uncover the truth behind the legends and document any supernatural activity. As they set up their equipment and began their investigation, they immediately sensed an oppressive presence within the mansion. Strange noises, flickering lights, and cold spots were just the beginning. 
The team found old journals and letters that detailed Percival's descent into madness and his failed attempt to win Beatrice's love through dark magic. One night, while reviewing footage in the library, Clara noticed something unusual. In the background of one of the videos, she saw a faint, ghostly figure of a clown, his eyes glowing with an eerie light. The team decided to conduct a seance to communicate with Percival's spirit and learn more about his curse. The seance was a terrifying experience. As they chanted the incantations, the room grew colder and a thick fog enveloped them. The ghostly figure of Percival materialized before them, his face a mask of sorrow and rage. He spoke of his unrequited love for Beatrice and the dark pact that had doomed him to an eternity of torment. Percival's spirit begged for release, but he warned them that the demon he had summoned still lingered in the mansion, feeding on fear and despair. The team realized that to free Percival, they would have to confront the demon and break the curse. Armed with holy water, blessed relics, and their wits, the team ventured into the mansion's deepest, darkest recesses. The atmosphere grew more oppressive with each step, and they felt the demon's malevolent presence closing in around them. The final showdown took place in the mansion's grand ballroom, where the demon had made its lair. The air was thick with dark energy, and the walls seemed to pulse with an otherworldly light. The demon, a grotesque and twisted figure, emerged from the shadows, its eyes burning with a malevolent fire. The team fought valiantly, using their holy relics and incantations to weaken the demon. As the battle raged, Percival's spirit appeared, lending his strength to their efforts. With a final desperate incantation, Dr. Harker banished the demon, and a blinding light filled the room. When the light faded, the demon was gone, and Percival's spirit stood before them, free at last. His grotesque visage had transformed back into the cheerful clown he once was. With a grateful smile, he thanked the team and faded into the ether, his laughter now a sound of joy rather than sorrow. The team emerged from Blackwood Manor, forever changed by their experience. They had uncovered the truth behind the legend of the clown in the mansion and had freed a tormented soul from its eternal prison. The mansion, now cleansed of its dark influence, stood as a testament to their bravery and determination. Dr. Harker and his team documented their findings, sharing the story of Percival and the cursed Blackwood Manor with the world. The mansion became a site of historical interest, attracting visitors and researchers eager to learn more about its haunted past. And while the mansion's halls were no longer filled with the sound of Percival's haunting laughter, the legend of the clown in the mansion lived on, a chilling reminder of the darkness that could lurk behind even the most cheerful of masks. Story 6 the Clown in the Abandoned Amusement Park In the heart of the Midwest, surrounded by miles of cornfields and forgotten by time, lay the abandoned amusement park known as Whispering Pines. The park had been a bustling destination in the 1950s, drawing families from all over with its thrilling rides, carnival games, and vibrant atmosphere. The centerpiece of the park was a clown named Bobo, whose larger-than-life personality and infectious laughter made him a beloved figure among visitors. However, beneath the surface of joy and excitement, a series of tragic accidents plagued the park. The merry-go-round malfunctioned, injuring several children. The Ferris wheel collapsed, resulting in multiple fatalities, and Bobo's own performance ended in disaster when a fire broke out, claiming his life and the lives of several others. The park closed its gates shortly after, and Whispering Pines was left to decay, its once bright colors faded to eerie, ghostly hues. Decades later, the abandoned amusement park became a destination for urban explorers, thrill-seekers, and ghost hunters. Among them was a group of college friends, Alex, Sam, Lily, and Max. Fascinated by the stories of Whispering Pines and the legend of Bobo the Clown, they decided to document their exploration of the park. Armed with cameras, flashlights, and a sense of adventure, the group ventured into the decaying park. The air was thick with the scent of mold and rust, and the sound of creaking metal and distant echoes added to the unsettling atmosphere. They wandered through the derelict rides and games, capturing footage of the park's eerie beauty and sharing ghost stories to heighten the tension. As night fell, they decided to set up camp near the old funhouse, the location most associated with Bobo. The funhouse, once a place of laughter and excitement, now stood as a decaying shell, its mirrors cracked, and its walls covered in graffiti. The group prepared for a night of ghost hunting, unaware of the true horrors that awaited them. 
As the hours passed, strange occurrences began to unfold. The temperature dropped suddenly, and the sound of distant laughter echoed through the park. Shadows moved in the corners of their vision, and the smell of burning wood filled the air. The group, initially skeptical, quickly realized that they were not alone. Max, the group's skeptic, was the first to encounter Bobo's spirit. While exploring the old roller coaster, he saw a figure in a clown costume standing at the end of the track. Thinking it was a prank, he approached, only for the figure to vanish into thin air. Terrified, he rushed back to the others, his disbelief shattered. The group gathered their equipment and decided to document their experiences, hoping to capture evidence of the supernatural. As they reviewed the footage, they saw glimpses of Bobo's ghostly figure, his eyes glowing with a malevolent light. The laughter grew louder, and the group realized that Bobo's spirit was not just haunting the park, but actively seeking them out. Determined to uncover the truth, the group delved into the history of Whispering Pines and the tragic events that led to its closure. They discovered that Bobo, whose real name was Benjamin O'Connell, had been a kind-hearted man with a love for making people laugh. However, the series of accidents had been orchestrated by the park's corrupt owner, who had sabotaged the rides to collect insurance money. Bobo had discovered the owner's plans and confronted him, leading to a struggle that caused the fire. Bobo's spirit, consumed by anger and a desire for justice, had been trapped in the park ever since, seeking retribution for the wrongs done to him and the innocent lives lost. The group decided to hold a seance to communicate with Bobo's spirit and offer him the closure he needed. They gathered in the center of the park, lighting candles and chanting incantations to summon the clown's ghost. As the air grew colder and the laughter reached a crescendo, Bobo's figure materialized before them, his face a mask of sorrow and rage. Bobo's spirit spoke to them, his voice filled with pain and longing. He revealed the truth about the park's tragic history and begged for release from his torment. The group, moved by his story, promised to help him find peace. They recited a final incantation, calling upon the spirits of the victims to join Bobo in the afterlife. As they completed the ritual, a bright light enveloped the park, and Bobo's spirit began to fade. His expression softened, and for the first time in decades, he smiled a genuine smile. With a final, grateful nod, Bobo vanished, and the park fell silent. The group left Whispering Pines, forever changed by their experience. They shared their story with the world, revealing the truth behind the legend of Bobo the Clown and the tragic events that had haunted the park. Whispering Pines became a site of historical significance, attracting visitors and paranormal enthusiasts eager to learn about its haunted past. And while the park's rides remained still and silent, the laughter of Bobo the Clown was no longer a sound of fear, but a reminder of the courage and compassion that had brought him peace. Story 7. The Clown at the Old Hotel In the bustling city of Riverton, the Riverside Hotel was a beacon of luxury and sophistication. Built in the early 1900s, the hotel was a marvel of architecture, boasting opulent ballrooms, lavish suites, and world-class amenities. It quickly became the go-to destination for the city's elite, hosting grand galas, business meetings, and high society events. Among the hotel's many attractions was a small theater in the basement, where guests could enjoy performances by musicians, actors, and magicians. The most popular act was a clown named Jasper, whose charming antics and heartfelt performances made him a favorite among guests. Jasper's act was a blend of comedy and magic, and his gentle demeanor won the hearts of children and adults alike. However, beneath the surface of elegance and joy, a sinister secret lurked within the Riverside Hotel. Unbeknownst to the guests and staff, the hotel had been built on the grounds of an old asylum, where countless patients had suffered and died. The hotel's foundation was imbued with the restless spirits of the past, and their anguish began to seep into the present. One fateful night, during a grand masquerade ball, tragedy struck. A fire broke out in the basement theater, trapping Jasper and several guests inside. The flames spread quickly, and the hotel's staff and firefighters were unable to reach them in time. Jasper and the others perished in the inferno, their screams echoing through the halls of the Riverside Hotel. The hotel's reputation never recovered from the tragedy, and it eventually closed its doors. The once luxurious building fell into disrepair, its grand facade now a decaying shell. 
The Riverside Hotel became a source of ghost stories and urban legends, with locals claiming to hear the laughter of a clown and the sound of a piano playing in the dead of night. Years later, a wealthy entrepreneur named Richard Stanton purchased the Riverside Hotel with the intent of restoring it to its former glory. Stanton was a visionary, eager to breathe new life into the historic building and create a destination that would attract visitors from far and wide. He assembled a team of architects, designers, and construction workers to undertake the massive renovation project. Among the team was Alice, a young interior designer with a passion for history and a keen interest in the paranormal. Alice had heard the stories about the Riverside Hotel and was intrigued by its haunted reputation. As she worked on the project, she began to notice strange occurrences, flickering lights, cold spots, and the faint sound of laughter echoing through the empty halls. One night, while exploring the basement theater, Alice found an old trunk filled with Jasper's belongings. Among the items were his clown costume, makeup kit, and a journal filled with notes about his performances and the hotel's history. Alice felt a connection to Jasper and decided to investigate further, hoping to uncover the truth behind the haunting. As the renovation progressed, the paranormal activity intensified. Workers reported seeing ghostly figures, hearing disembodied voices, and feeling an oppressive presence. Tools and equipment would go missing or be found in strange places, and the sound of a piano playing would fill the air at odd hours. Alice delved into the hotel's history, uncovering the dark past of the asylum and the tragic fire that claimed Jasper's life. She began to experience vivid dreams in which she saw the fire through Jasper's eyes, feeling his fear and anguish. Determined to help his spirit find peace, Alice sought the assistance of a local medium named Madame Lavinia. Together, Alice and Madame Lavinia conducted a seance in the basement theater, hoping to communicate with Jasper's spirit. The seance was a harrowing experience, with the temperature dropping and the room filling with an eerie, otherworldly light. Jasper's spirit appeared before them, his face a mask of sorrow and pain. Jasper's spirit revealed the truth about the fire. It had been set deliberately by a jealous rival who wanted to eliminate Jasper and take his place as the hotel's star performer. The rival, a magician named Victor, had perished in the fire as well, his soul trapped alongside Jasper's in the hotel. Jasper begged for release, but Victor's malevolent spirit refused to let go of his grudge. The two spirits were locked in an eternal struggle, their conflict fueling the haunting of the Riverside Hotel. Alice and Madame Lavinia realized that to free Jasper, they would need to confront and banish Victor's vengeful spirit. Armed with holy water, protective charms, and their resolve, Alice and Madame Lavinia performed a powerful exorcism. The confrontation was fierce, with Victor's spirit lashing out in anger and desperation. The room shook, and the air crackled with dark energy as the two women fought to banish the malevolent spirit. With a final triumphant chant, Madame Lavinia completed the exorcism, and Victor's spirit was banished in a burst of light. The room fell silent, and Jasper's spirit, now free from his tormentor, appeared before them. He thanked Alice and Madame Lavinia, his expression one of peace and gratitude. The Riverside Hotel, cleansed of its dark influence, was finally able to reopen. The renovation was completed, and the hotel quickly regained its reputation as a premier destination. Guests marveled at the restored grandeur and the stories of the hotel's haunted past. Alice continued her work as an interior designer, but she never forgot her experience at the Riverside Hotel. She felt a deep connection to Jasper and the hotel's history, and she often visited to pay her respects and ensure that the spirits remained at peace. The Riverside Hotel became a popular spot for paranormal enthusiasts, with visitors eager to experience the hotel's haunted history. And while the laughter of a clown could still be heard echoing through the halls, it was now a sound of joy and remembrance, a testament to the courage and compassion that had brought peace to the restless spirits of the past. Story 8. The Clown at the Summer Camp Nestled deep within the woods of upstate New York, Camp Hollow Creek was a popular summer destination for children seeking adventure and fun. The camp had been established in the 1960s and quickly gained a reputation for its scenic beauty, exciting activities, and dedicated staff. However, the camp also had a darker side, one that was whispered among the campers and staff alike, the legend of the clown of Hollow Creek. The story went that in the early days of the camp, a clown named Charlie had been hired to entertain the children. Charlie was a gifted performer, 
known for his magic tricks and humorous antics. But one summer, a terrible accident occurred during a performance, resulting in the death of a young camper. Heartbroken and consumed by guilt, Charlie disappeared into the woods, never to be seen again. In the years that followed, campers and staff reported strange occurrences, laughter echoing through the trees, sightings of a clown in the shadows, and inexplicable accidents. The legend of Charlie the Clown grew, and some claimed that his spirit haunted the camp, seeking to protect the children from harm while also longing for forgiveness. In the summer of 2020, a new group of counselors arrived at Camp Hollow Creek eager to start the season. Among them were Emily, a seasoned camp counselor with a love for the outdoors, Jake, a charismatic lifeguard, Sarah, a talented musician, and Mark, a history buff with a fascination for local legends. They quickly bonded with the campers and each other, creating a sense of camaraderie and excitement. One evening, as the counselors gathered around the campfire, Mark shared the legend of Charlie the Clown. The campers listened in rapt attention, their faces illuminated by the flickering flames. Some laughed nervously, dismissing the story as a spooky campfire tale, while others shivered at the thought of a haunted clown lurking in the woods. As the days passed, strange incidents began to occur. Emily found a child's drawing of a clown tucked under her pillow, despite having locked the cabin door. Jake heard laughter coming from the lake at night, even though no one was around. Sarah's guitar strings snapped inexplicably during a sing-along, and Mark discovered old circus posters in the attic of the main lodge, featuring Charlie's smiling face. Determined to uncover the truth behind the legend, the counselors decided to investigate. They spoke with the camp's longtime caretaker, Mr. Thompson, who revealed that he had known Charlie personally. According to Mr. Thompson, Charlie had been a kind and gentle soul, dedicated to bringing joy to the children. The accident had devastated him, and he had disappeared into the woods, leaving behind his belongings and a note expressing his sorrow. The counselors explored the camp's history, discovering old newspaper articles about the accident and Charlie's disappearance. They also found accounts of previous campers and counselors who had experienced strange occurrences linked to the legend. The more they learned, the more they believed that Charlie's spirit was indeed haunting the camp. One night, Emily, Jake, Sarah, and Mark decided to conduct a seance to communicate with Charlie's spirit and offer him the forgiveness he sought. They gathered in the old performance tent, where Charlie had once entertained the campers, and lit candles to create a circle of light. Holding hands, they began to chant, calling out to Charlie and asking for his presence. As the seance progressed, the temperature dropped and the candles flickered wildly. The sound of distant laughter filled the air, and a faint, ghostly figure of a clown appeared before them. Charlie's spirit, his face a mask of sorrow and regret, stood in the center of the circle. Charlie revealed that he had never meant to harm anyone, and that the accident had been a terrible mistake. He spoke of his love for the children and his desire to bring them happiness. The counselors listened with heavy hearts, moved by his anguish and longing for redemption. They assured Charlie that they forgave him and that the campers he had once entertained still remembered him fondly. With their words of forgiveness, Charlie's spirit began to fade, his expression softening into a smile. He thanked them for their kindness and understanding, and with a final gentle laugh, he disappeared into the ether. The next morning, the camp awoke to a sense of peace and renewal. The strange occurrences ceased, and the campers and counselors felt a newfound sense of safety and joy. The legend of Charlie the Clown became a story of forgiveness and redemption, a reminder of the power of compassion and understanding. Emily, Jake, Sarah, and Mark shared their experience with the rest of the camp, honoring Charlie's memory and ensuring that his story would be told for generations to come. They placed a plaque in the old performance tent, dedicating it to Charlie and his legacy of laughter and love. Camp Hollow Creek continued to thrive, with each summer bringing new adventures and memories. The counselors and campers carried the lessons of Charlie's story with them, cherishing the bonds they formed and the joy they shared. And on quiet nights, when the wind rustled through the trees and the stars shone brightly overhead, the sound of distant laughter could still be heard, a gentle reminder that Charlie the Clown would always be a part of Camp Hollow Creek, watching over the children and bringing them joy from beyond the veil. Story 9. The Clown in the Carnival of Shadows In the quiet town of Harper's Grove, the annual summer carnival was the highlight of the year. 
people from neighboring towns would flock to enjoy the rides, games, and entertainment. This year, however, something was different. A new attraction had arrived, a mysterious, old-fashioned carnival that seemed to appear overnight on the outskirts of town. The new carnival, called Carnival of Shadows, was run by a man named Mr. Grimm, who introduced the town to his star performer, a clown named Felix. Felix's performances were mesmerizing, blending humor with an eerie, almost hypnotic quality. His painted smile and dark eyes captivated audiences, but there was something unsettling about him that no one could quite put their finger on. As the carnival drew crowds, strange events began to unfold. People started to disappear. At first, it was just a few children who wandered off, but soon, adults went missing too. The townspeople grew anxious, but Mr. Grimm assured them that it was all part of the carnival's mysterious allure. A group of friends, Tom, Rachel, Kevin, and Lisa, decided to investigate. They were particularly concerned because Kevin's younger brother, Timmy, was among the missing. They scoured the carnival, questioning workers and searching the rides, but found no clues. The only constant in their search was Felix, who seemed to be everywhere and nowhere at once. Their search led them to the carnival's funhouse, a sprawling maze of mirrors, hidden passages, and eerie laughter. They entered, determined to find answers. Inside, the funhouse seemed to have a life of its own, with distorted reflections and haunting whispers guiding their path. As they ventured deeper, they encountered Felix, who greeted them with a twisted grin. He beckoned them to follow, and despite their fear, they had no choice. Felix led them to the heart of the funhouse, a chamber filled with mirrors that reflected not just their images, but their deepest fears. In the chamber, Felix revealed the truth. He was not just a clown, but a supernatural being bound to the carnival. Mr. Grimm was a sorcerer who had trapped Felix and others in the carnival centuries ago, using their life forces to sustain the carnival's magic and his own immortality. The missing people were trapped in the mirrors, their souls feeding the carnival's dark energy. Felix, once a kind and joyful performer, had been twisted by centuries of servitude. He longed for freedom, but was bound by Mr. Grimm's dark magic. However, he had grown tired of the endless cycle and saw an opportunity in the friend's arrival. Felix proposed a deal. If the friends could destroy the mirrors and break the enchantment, they could free the trapped souls, including Timmy and Felix himself. The friends agreed, despite the danger. Armed with their resolve, they began smashing the mirrors, each shattering releasing a wail of pain and relief. Mr. Grimm, sensing his control weakening, appeared in a fury, attempting to stop them. A fierce battle ensued, with Felix using his supernatural abilities to fight Mr. Grimm. In the end, the friends managed to destroy the final mirror, breaking the enchantment. The trapped souls, including Timmy, were freed, and Felix, with a genuine smile, thanked them before fading away. Mr. Grimm, deprived of his power, vanished into the shadows, his carnival collapsing into ruin. The townspeople, unaware of the true horrors that had transpired, found the carnival gone the next morning, replaced by an empty field. The missing people were found wandering the outskirts of town, dazed but alive. Tom, Rachel, Kevin, and Lisa never spoke of the true events, but they knew they had saved their town from an ancient evil. Harper's Grove returned to its peaceful routine, but the memory of the Carnival of Shadows lingered. And on quiet nights, the faint echo of Felix's laughter could be heard, a reminder of the brave souls who had broken the cycle of darkness. Story 10. The Clown in the Mirror In the quaint town of Eldridge, an old antique store stood at the corner of Main Street. The store, called Timeless Treasures, was filled with curiosities and relics from bygone eras. Its owner, Mr. Whitaker, was an eccentric collector with a penchant for the macabre. One day, he acquired a peculiar item, an ornate full-length mirror with a gilded frame. The mirror had an air of mystery, and Mr. Whitaker placed it prominently in the store's window. It quickly became a topic of fascination and fear among the townspeople, who whispered about its unsettling reflections and eerie aura. The mirror's origins were unknown, but it was said to have once belonged to a traveling circus. One evening, Emily, a curious teenager with a love for the supernatural, visited the store with her friends, Jake and Lily. They were drawn to the mirror, despite the warnings from Mr. Whitaker. As they peered into its depths, 
they saw not only their reflections, but the image of a clown standing behind them. Startled, they turned to find nothing there. Mr. Whitaker explained that the mirror was believed to be haunted by the spirit of a clown named Barnaby, who had been part of a cursed circus. Barnaby had been a beloved performer, but after a tragic accident that claimed his life and the lives of several others, his spirit became trapped in the mirror, seeking vengeance on those who gazed into it. Undeterred by the legend, Emily purchased the mirror, convinced it was just a story. She brought it home and placed it in her bedroom. That night, she experienced vivid nightmares of the circus and Barnaby's tragic fate. She saw the fire that had consumed the circus tent and felt Barnaby's anguish as he tried to save the trapped performers. Over the next few days, Emily's behavior changed. She became withdrawn, her eyes reflecting a haunted look. Her friends noticed the change and grew concerned, especially when they saw Barnaby's face appear in the mirror whenever they visited her. The clown's presence seemed to grow stronger, feeding off Emily's fear and despair. Jake and Lily decided to investigate the mirror's origins. They returned to Timeless Treasures and questioned Mr. Whitaker, who revealed that the mirror had been part of a traveling circus in the 1920s. The circus had been plagued by a series of accidents, culminating in a devastating fire. Barnaby, the clown, had died trying to save others, and his spirit had been bound to the mirror by a curse. Mr. Whitaker also shared a piece of crucial information, the curse could be broken by reenacting Barnaby's final act of bravery and releasing his spirit. Jake and Lily knew they had to act quickly to save Emily and put Barnaby's spirit to rest. They returned to Emily's house, finding her in a trance-like state, standing before the mirror. Barnaby's reflection loomed behind her, his eyes filled with sorrow and longing. Jake and Lily explained the plan to Emily, who nodded weakly, her voice barely a whisper. With Mr. Whitaker's guidance, they set up a small reenactment of the circus fire in Emily's backyard. They created a makeshift tent and lit a controlled fire, intending to mimic Barnaby's final moments. Emily, dressed in a clown costume, stepped into the tent, holding a small antique doll that had belonged to one of the children Barnaby had tried to save. As the flames crackled, Emily recited an incantation provided by Mr. Whitaker, calling upon Barnaby's spirit to find peace. The mirror, placed at the entrance of the tent, began to glow, and Barnaby's reflection appeared, his expression shifting from sorrow to hope. The air grew cold, and a spectral figure emerged from the mirror, taking the form of Barnaby. He reached out to Emily, who handed him the doll. Barnaby cradled the doll, tears streaming down his painted face. With a final grateful smile, he stepped into the flames, which extinguished instantly, leaving only a wisp of smoke. The mirror shattered, and Emily collapsed into Jake and Lily's arms, exhausted but free from Barnaby's influence. They had broken the curse, releasing Barnaby's spirit and ending his torment. The shattered mirror pieces were gathered and buried in a quiet corner of the local cemetery, along with a small plaque commemorating Barnaby's bravery. Emily gradually returned to her normal self, though the experience left a lasting impression on her and her friends. Timeless treasures continued to operate, but Mr. Whitaker ensured that no other cursed items found their way into the store. The legend of the haunted mirror became a tale of redemption and courage, a reminder of the power of compassion and the importance of confronting the past. And though the mirror was gone, the spirit of Barnaby the Clown was finally at rest, his laughter no longer a sound of sorrow, but a distant echo of joy. Story 11. The Clown in the Forest Every summer, the children of Pine Hollow gathered for their annual camping trip in the dense, ancient woods that surrounded their town. The trip was filled with hiking, swimming, and ghost stories told around the campfire. This year, the camp counselors decided to share a particularly chilling tale, the legend of the clown in the forest. The story went that decades ago, a traveling circus had come through Pine Hollow, performing in a clearing deep in the woods. The star of the show was a clown named Smiley, known for his infectious laughter and heartwarming performances. However, one night, the circus tent caught fire, and in the chaos, Smiley vanished into the forest, never to be seen again. The legend claimed that Smiley's spirit still roamed the woods, searching for his lost circus and seeking revenge on those who disturbed the peace of the forest. Campers reported hearing eerie laughter and seeing glimpses of a clown among the trees. The counselors ended the story with a warning, if you hear Smiley's laughter, do not follow it. Among the campers was a group of adventurous teenagers, Megan, Jason, Claire, and Eric, who were fascinated by the legend. 
One evening, after the younger kids had gone to bed, they decided to explore the forest and see if they could find any trace of Smiley. Armed with flashlights and a map of the area, they set off into the woods, their hearts pounding with excitement and fear. As they ventured deeper, the forest grew darker and more oppressive. Strange sounds echoed through the trees, and they felt as though they were being watched. After hours of wandering, they stumbled upon an old, overgrown path that led to a clearing. In the center stood the remnants of a circus tent, its faded colors barely visible through the undergrowth. The air was thick with an unnatural chill, and the sound of faint laughter sent shivers down their spines. As they approached the tent, a figure emerged from the shadows, a clown with a painted smile and hollow eyes. It was Smiley. He greeted them with a voice that was both friendly and menacing, inviting them to join him in his eternal performance. Fear gripped the teenagers as Smiley's laughter grew louder and more manic. They tried to run, but the forest seemed to close in around them, trapping them in the clearing. Smiley's figure flickered like a ghost, appearing and disappearing in the shadows. Desperate to escape, Megan remembered the warning from the campfire story. She shouted for everyone to cover their ears and ignore Smiley's laughter. The others followed her lead, and slowly, the oppressive feeling began to lift. They backed away from the tent, focusing on finding the path they had come from. Smiley's laughter grew more frantic, and his figure became more distorted and ghostly. The forest seemed to push them away, guiding them back to safety. With a final burst of speed, they broke through the tree line and stumbled back into the campsite, gasping for breath. The laughter faded, and the oppressive chill lifted, leaving them shaken but unharmed. The counselors listened in disbelief as the teenagers recounted their experience. They realized that the legend of Smiley was more than just a campfire story. They decided to take down the tale from their roster of ghost stories, not wanting to encourage others to venture into the forest. Megan, Jason, Claire, and Eric made a pact to never speak of their encounter again, but the memory of Smiley's haunting laughter stayed with them. They returned to their normal lives, but the experience left a lasting mark on their hearts and minds. Pine Hollow continued to be a popular camping destination, but the forest's darker side was never forgotten. The legend of the clown in the forest became a cautionary tale, a reminder of the dangers that lurk in the shadows and the importance of respecting the unknown. And deep in the woods, the remnants of the circus tent remained, a silent testament to Smiley's eternal performance, his laughter echoing faintly through the trees waiting for the next curious soul to stumble upon his haunted clearing. Story 12. The Clown in the Abandoned Amusement Park In the outskirts of the bustling city of Riverton lay an abandoned amusement park, once known as Happyland. Decades ago, Happyland was the place where families flocked to enjoy thrilling rides, exciting games, and entertaining shows. The star attraction was a clown named Giggles, whose hilarious antics and heartwarming performances brought joy to countless children. However, one fateful day, a tragic accident on the Ferris wheel claimed the lives of several visitors, including Giggles. The park closed down soon after, and the once vibrant Happy Land fell into disrepair, becoming a shadow of its former self. Over time, the park became overgrown with weeds, and rumors spread about it being haunted by the ghost of Giggles. In 2023, a group of urban explorers decided to investigate the abandoned amusement park. Among them were Alex, a photographer with a penchant for the eerie, Jenna, a history buff fascinated by abandoned places, Mark, a thrill seeker, and Lisa, a skeptic who thought ghost stories were nonsense. They arrived at Happy Land on a foggy evening, the setting sun casting long shadows over the decaying rides and broken attractions. The air was thick with an eerie silence, and the group felt a sense of unease as they ventured deeper into the park. Alex snapped photos while Jenna marveled at the history etched into the dilapidated structures. As they explored the old funhouse, they heard faint laughter echoing through the halls. They dismissed it as the wind or an animal, but the laughter grew louder and more distinct. Suddenly, Giggles appeared before them, his painted smile twisted into a grimace. His once cheerful face was now a mask of sorrow and rage. Giggles beckoned them to follow, his ghostly figure gliding through the funhouse. Despite their fear, curiosity got the better of them, and they followed him to an old dressing room. Inside, they found a dusty trunk filled with Giggles' personal belongings, costumes, makeup, and a journal. 
Jenna opened the journal and began reading aloud. It detailed Giggles' life, his love for entertaining children, and his heartbreak over the accident that had claimed his life. The final entry revealed a shocking truth. The accident had not been a mere mishap, but an act of sabotage by a jealous rival who wanted to ruin Giggles and the park. Giggles' spirit had been trapped in Happy Land, seeking justice for the wrong done to him and the victims of the accident. The group realized that the only way to free Giggles was to expose the truth and bring closure to the victims' families. Determined to help Giggles find peace, the group gathered evidence from the journal and other documents they found in the park. They encountered Giggles multiple times, his spirit growing more agitated as they uncovered the truth. It became clear that the rival, a magician named Maximus, had caused the accident and framed it as a malfunction. They took their findings to the local authorities, who reopened the case. With the new evidence, Maximus, now an elderly man, was finally brought to justice. The victim's families received the closure they had longed for, and a memorial was erected at Happy Land in their honor. As the memorial was unveiled, Giggles' spirit appeared one last time before the group. His expression was one of gratitude and peace. With a final bow, he vanished, his laughter echoing softly as it faded into the wind. The curse of Happy Land was lifted, and the park, though still abandoned, no longer felt haunted. The group of explorers returned to their lives, forever changed by their experience. Alex's photographs of Giggles and the park became a poignant reminder of their adventure and the importance of uncovering the truth. Jenna's research was published, shedding light on the tragic history of Happy Land. And in the quiet corners of Riverton, people spoke of Giggles the Clown, not as a vengeful spirit, but as a hero who had finally found peace, thanks to the bravery and compassion of four young explorers. Story 13. The Clown in the Orphanage. In the sleepy town of West Hollow, the old orphanage at the edge of town stood as a relic of the past. The West Hollow Orphanage had been closed for decades, its darkened windows and overgrown grounds giving it an eerie appearance. The children of the town often dared each other to approach it, but few ever did. The orphanage had once been a haven for children in need, run by a kind-hearted woman named Miss Clara. Among the staff was a clown named Jolly, who entertained the children with his colorful costumes and joyful performances. However, Jolly disappeared under mysterious circumstances, and soon after, the orphanage was shut down. In 2024, a group of friends decided to document the old orphanage for their paranormal investigation channel. Emma, the leader and a skeptic. Ben, the tech expert. Chloe, the sensitive. And Ryan, the cameraman, arrived at West Hollow with their equipment and a mix of excitement and trepidation. They entered the orphanage, finding it frozen in time. Dust-covered toys, faded drawings, and old furniture filled the rooms, giving them a glimpse into the lives of the children who once lived there. As they set up their equipment, Chloe felt a strange presence, as if they were being watched. That night, as they reviewed their footage, they noticed something chilling. A clown figure appearing in the background of several shots. At first, they thought it was a trick of the light, but as they continued filming, Jolly's spirit made itself known. His once cheerful face was now a haunting visage of sadness and longing. Jolly began to communicate with them through Chloe, who sensed his emotions and heard his faint whispers. He revealed that he had been murdered by the orphanage's cruel caretaker, Mr. Thompson, who had buried his body in the basement to cover up the crime. Jolly's spirit had remained trapped, seeking justice and protection for the children. Determined to help Jolly, the friends delved into the orphanage's history. They discovered records of children who had disappeared under mysterious circumstances, with no follow-up investigations. The townspeople had turned a blind eye to the horrors within the orphanage, and Mr. Thompson had died long ago, leaving his dark secrets buried. Emma, Ben, Chloe, and Ryan decided to confront the truth head-on. They ventured into the basement where they found an old locked trunk. Inside, they discovered Jolly's remains, along with evidence of Mr. Thompson's crimes letters, photographs, and a diary detailing his abuses. They took their findings to the authorities, who reopened the cold case. The town was shocked by the revelations, and a memorial service was held for Jolly and the children who had suffered under Mr. Thompson's care. The orphanage was declared a historical site, with plans to restore it as a museum to honor the victims. During the memorial service, Jolly's spirit appeared, his expression one of relief and gratitude. 
The children of the orphanage, now at peace, also made their presence known. The air was filled with a sense of closure and healing. The friends returned to their lives, their channel gaining fame for uncovering the dark history of the West Hollow Orphanage. Emma, once a skeptic, became a firm believer in the paranormal, while Chloe continued to hone her abilities. Ben and Ryan used their skills to help others uncover the truth about haunted places. The orphanage, now a museum, became a place of learning and reflection, ensuring that the memories of Jolly and the children would never be forgotten. The town of West Hollow embraced its past, honoring the victims and ensuring that such horrors would never happen again. And on quiet nights, the sound of laughter and the sight of a cheerful clown could be glimpsed through the windows of the orphanage, a gentle reminder of the spirit who had finally found peace. Story 14. The Clown in the Circus of Dreams In the magical city of Valeria, known for its enchantments and wonders, the Circus of Dreams was a beloved institution. The circus was famous for its spellbinding performances, where magic and reality intertwined seamlessly. The star of the show was a clown named Bobo, whose tricks and antics were infused with real magic. Bobo was a kind-hearted soul, beloved by all who saw him perform. However, beneath his cheerful exterior, he hid a secret. He was bound to the circus by a powerful enchantment, unable to leave or age. The circus owner, Madame Serafina, was a sorceress who had used ancient magic to bind Bobo to the circus, ensuring her show's perpetual success. One day, a young magician named Leo joined the circus, eager to learn from Madame Serafina and Bobo. Leo was talented and ambitious, with a natural gift for magic. He quickly befriended Bobo, who saw in Leo a potential ally and confidant. Leo soon noticed Bobo's sadness and the hidden pain behind his painted smile. As they grew closer, Bobo revealed his secret to Leo. He told Leo about the enchantment that bound him to the circus and Madame Serafina's role in his plight. He expressed his longing for freedom and the chance to live a normal life. Leo, moved by Bobo's story, vowed to help him break the enchantment and liberate him from Madame Serafina's control. Leo began researching the enchantment that bound Bobo to the Circus of Dreams. He discovered that the spell was deeply rooted in ancient magic and could only be broken by a powerful counterspell. This counterspell required three rare ingredients, a tear of a unicorn, the feather of a phoenix, and the heart of a dragon. Undeterred by the challenge, Leo and Bobo devised a plan to acquire these ingredients. They knew it wouldn't be easy, but Leo's determination and Bobo's desire for freedom fueled their resolve. Leo and Bobo set off on their quest, leaving the circus for the first time in decades. Their first destination was the Enchanted Forest, home to the elusive unicorns. They navigated through the dense, magical woods, facing numerous trials and enchantments. After days of searching, they found a unicorn named Leora. She agreed to help them, moved by Bobo's plight, and shed a single tear into a crystal vial. Their next stop was the Volcanic Peaks, where the legendary phoenixes resided. The journey was treacherous, with scorching heat and dangerous terrain. After enduring many hardships, they encountered a majestic phoenix named Pyra. Understanding their quest, Pyra gifted them one of her feathers, glowing with fiery magic. The final and most dangerous part of their quest led them to the Dragon's Lair, a cavern deep within the Forbidden Mountains. The dragon, Arcanus, was known for his fierce temper and immense power. Leo and Bobo approached with caution, explaining their mission. Arcanus, intrigued by their bravery and Bobo's tale, offered a piece of his enchanted heart, which was not fatal to him, but incredibly powerful. Armed with the ingredients, Leo and Bobo returned to the Circus of Dreams. They prepared the counterspell, knowing they would need to confront Madame Serafina. The night of the big performance, as the circus was filled with spectators, Leo and Bobo made their move. During Bobo's act, Leo cast the counterspell, using the rare ingredients. Madame Serafina, sensing the magical disturbance, rushed to the stage. A fierce magical duel ensued between Leo and Madame Serafina, their spells lighting up the tent. The audience watched in awe, thinking it was part of the performance. With Bobo's encouragement and the power of the counterspell, Leo managed to overpower Madame Serafina. The enchantment broke with a blinding flash, freeing Bobo from his magical chains. Madame Serafina, defeated and stripped of her powers, fled the circus, never to be seen again. 
With Madame Serafina gone and the enchantment broken, the Circus of Dreams was free from her dark influence. Bobo, now able to age and live a normal life, felt a sense of peace and joy he hadn't known in decades. The circus continued, but under new, kinder management, with Leo taking on a leadership role and ensuring that it remained a place of wonder and enchantment without dark magic. Bobo continued to perform, but now with genuine joy and freedom. The audiences sensed the change, and the Circus of Dreams became more popular than ever, a place where magic and happiness thrived without the shadows of the past. Leo and Bobo's bond grew stronger, their friendship cemented by their shared journey and triumph over dark magic. The circus flourished, attracting performers and visitors from all over the magical world. Bobo, now free, also took time to explore the world outside the circus, experiencing the life he had long been denied. Valeria celebrated the liberation of the Circus of Dreams, and Bobo became a symbol of hope and resilience. His story was told and retold, inspiring others to stand against injustice and believe in the power of friendship and courage. And so, the Circus of Dreams continued to enchant and amaze, but with a heart full of light and a legacy of triumph over darkness. Story 15, The Clown in the Ghost Town. In the arid deserts of the Southwest lay a ghost town named Hollow Creek. Once a thriving mining town, it had been abandoned in the early 1900s after the mines ran dry. The town's desolate streets, crumbling buildings, and eerie silence made it a place of local legend, with tales of ghosts and unexplained phenomena. Among the ghost stories was one about a clown named Chuckles who had entertained the miners and their families. Chuckles was known for his slapstick humor and warm-hearted performances, bringing joy to a harsh, unforgiving environment. However, during the town's decline, Chuckles mysteriously vanished, and it was said his ghost still roamed the deserted streets, seeking an audience. In 2024, a documentary crew decided to film an episode about Hollow Creek for their paranormal series, Haunted America. The crew consisted of Sam, the director, Ava, the historian, Mike, the camera operator, and Lily, the medium. They arrived at Hollow Creek with a mix of excitement and apprehension, eager to capture evidence of the supernatural. As they explored the town, they found remnants of its past, rusted mining equipment, decaying houses, and the old saloon where Chuckles had performed. The atmosphere was thick with an unspoken presence, and Lily sensed that they were not alone. Their first night in Hollow Creek, strange things began to happen. They heard faint laughter echoing through the empty streets and saw flickering lights in the old saloon. Intrigued, they set up their equipment and conducted a seance in the saloon, hoping to make contact with Chuckles. During the seance, Chuckles' ghost appeared, his once cheerful face now a mask of sorrow and longing. He communicated through Lily, expressing his sadness at the town's abandonment and his longing for an audience. He revealed that he had been murdered by a jealous rival performer who had buried his body in the desert to hide the crime. Determined to help Chuckles find peace, the crew began searching for his remains. Ava delved into the town's history, uncovering records of rival performers and old maps of the area. They pieced together clues and narrowed down the possible location of Chuckles' burial site. With shovels and determination, they began digging in the desert, guided by Lily's psychic impressions and the historical maps. After several days of searching, they finally uncovered a shallow grave containing Chuckles' remains, along with the distinctive costume he had worn in his performances. As they prepared to give Chuckles a proper burial, his ghost appeared once more. He thanked them for their efforts and revealed the full story of his murder. His rival, a magician named Alistair, had been consumed by jealousy over Chuckles' popularity. In a fit of rage, Alistair had killed Chuckles and hidden his body, ensuring that his secret would die with him. The crew documented everything, intending to expose the truth and clear Chuckles' name. They held a small, respectful ceremony, burying Chuckles in a proper grave with a marker bearing his real name, Charles Barnum. With Chuckles' remains properly buried and the truth revealed, the ghost town of Hollow Creek seemed to come alive once more. The oppressive atmosphere lifted, and the crew felt a sense of peace and accomplishment. They completed their documentary, sharing Chuckles' story with the world and bringing closure to a century-old mystery. The episode became a hit, and Hollow Creek attracted visitors and paranormal enthusiasts, curious to see the place where Chuckles' spirit had been laid to rest. The town, though still largely abandoned, was no longer seen as a place of fear, 
but as a site of historical significance and paranormal intrigue. Sam, Ava, Mike, and Lily return to their work, forever changed by their experience in Hollow Creek. They continued their series, inspired by the success of their episode on Chuckles, and driven by the knowledge that they could make a difference in the lives of the forgotten and misunderstood. And in the quiet, moonlit nights of Hollow Creek, the faint sound of Chuckles' laughter could still be heard, not as a ghostly wail, but as a gentle reminder of a clown who had finally found peace and an audience who would never forget him. Dear friends, thank you for listening to these stories to the end. If you know of any similar stories, please share them with me in the comments. And now, I wish you a good rest. 18 Talk was with you. See you soon.